Hey, buddy, watch this. Hello, hello, Regis Kilbin is the name, and Hearthstone is the game. And as you can see next to me, some new nerfs have been announced in both standard and wild format. Three cards are getting changed, and of course, I want to talk about them. Giggly Inventor, Mana Worm, and Aviana. And three cards uh, that are not a particularly huge surprise here when it comes to nerfs. So that said, let's go ahead and talk about each of these cards individually regarding their playability now, uh, how they're gonna impact specific decks and whether this was the right sort of stuff to target or not. Starting with, of course, the Giggling Inventor, the most played card from the Boomsday Project, uh, a card that in particular showed up everywhere for a long time there at the beginning of the expansion. I think it's dialed back a little bit in its use these days, but still a card that is in a lot of decks and most would argue far too many. And this is a big nerf taking Giggling Inventor from five to seven mana. I'm a little surprised here. I thought six mana was going to be sufficient for Giggling Inventor, just making it less impactful as that denial move on turn five where you shut out all of your opponent's stuff. Uh, six seemed like a reasonable nerf. Seven, taking it a step further, uh, that's going to make this card hard to play, I think, going forward. Most decks will now find this way too slow as a defensive impact card. It's no longer in that like sludge belcher slot. There's going to be cheaper taunts that come out sooner. Uh, you won't want to run this in a deck that's trying to stop aggro or just burst damage, for instance, because it's going to be so hard to play with other things. And turn seven is often just too late to start setting up those defensive maneuvers. Now, the other use case for a card like this was in uh, non-control decks, or at least decks that utilize it in a different sneakier way things like token druid for instance that would use this to get lots of minions on board that were sticky in combination with cards like strong shell scavenger or savage roar to eventually kill you and of course a deck like quest rogue and in particular quest rogue i thought it was really important to get giggly inventor to at least six mana so it wouldn't interact as strongly as it does right now with valera where you can play two giggling inventors in a single turn that's really spooky stuff uh, and in both cases of course pushing this to seven mana kills them in those decks i think it's going to be very hard for a quest rogue to run giggling inventor successfully which is good because it's going to lower the power level of quest rogue as well and quest rogue of course did not get touched by these nerfs otherwise there was no direct nerf to quest rogue and i didn't think there would be uh, when i talked through this previously i thought giggling inventor would be the card that was targeted to handle any quest rogue problems and, and this is clearly going to lower the power Power level of the deck. I think it's still going to have those games where it runs out certain kinds of uh, mid-range decks, but in control environments in particular without quite as many big dumps of Divine Shield, giggling inventors that you bounce back to your hand and do all this crazy stuff with, uh, it's not going to have as many ways to reload in the late game. Still going to be good at you know, moderate control decks, but those with enough removal will we'll have an easier time getting through all of these uh, different pieces instead of just generating an endless army of giggling inventors uh, in the late game with Valero, which was often a win condition enough in its own right. So is this card still going to be playable? I think uh, very hard to play as an anti-aggro tool, very hard to play in those, you know, niche decks like Token Druid or Quest Rogue. So to me, I, I don't know who's going to find room for Giggling Inventor. I thought at six mana, it would still see some play in, a, in, you know, different healthy varieties of decks. At seven, it feels like odd decks aren't really going to want to use this even still, like they could in the past, but they won't want to now. So there's no like new even deck opportunities that open up for it at six mana. What that means to me is, I mean, maybe this will still pop in from time to time in a very specific deck that just loves it for one reason or another. But otherwise, I think this thing is going to fall out of the meta pretty hard. Seven mana for just two Divine Shields. That's so much later in the game that opponents find even more ways to do with it or deal with it. Excuse me, they have more time to find the Mossy Horrors. They have more time uh, to just set up a wider board. So all around, I don't know that this is going to make the cut at seven mana. I think it's just a tad too slow compared to other defensive options and earlier defensive options. So this is obviously a huge nerf, and I'm scared Giggly Inventor might just be dead, which I guess isn't the end of the world, but still uh, a, a big change here. And I guess Blizzard even confirmed at six mana it still felt too good, so I have to trust their intentions there. Now let's move on to talk about Mana Worm for Mage. And this is a nerf a lot of people have been clamoring for. We've all had those games where Mana Worm 
just jumps out to an early start and completely runs you over and your opponent has like two, seven, three mana worms before there was anything you could do. That old Tunnel Trog style gameplay. And Mana Worm here will now be going to two mana instead of only one, making it a far slower play. Now it might seem like only one mana, but that's a really big deal. That's twice as expensive as it used to be. And slotting Mana Worm into early game turns, getting it out on turn one, uh, where it's much more likely to survive and get an early attack in is now going to be impossible. Uh, even with a coin, you won't really want to do that with a Mana Worm because the coin is so good with mages that are fast and it's so good with Mana Worm after Mana Worm's been played. So even any sort of coin shenanigans cheating this out on turn one are going to feel way worse than they used to as well. And again, what that means is I think Mana Worm is still kind of almost playable, but you know the use case for it today is gone. So most of the decks that love it for its early aggression and really quick tempo starts and lots of free damage are not going to be utilizing Mana Worm. So what that means is the Tempo Mage is going to get weaker or what should really be called Aggro or Burn Mage. I think most people are picking up on that trend. So let's say Burn Mage is going to be a lot weaker. Any fast version of Mage forever moving forward is going to have to be less reliant on that early game minion chip damage that Mana Worm can provide. And they're probably going to have to do more with spells or at the very least slot in a separate minion. You know, there's other options out there, uh, but they aren't going to be as impactful and give you those free wins that Mana Worm seems to give you. So the deck's going to have to do some work beyond that. Now, as far as Mana Worm itself, it is a two mana one three. When you compare this card to other two drops, it actually looks pretty good still it looks favorable compared to lots of different things even a card like mana addict for instance i think um mana worm has the potential to be better like yes the attack value is smaller per spell but it lasts forever unlike mana addict which only lasts until the end of the turn so uh, i do think mana worm looks okay in a vacuum here there might still be a deck somewhere out there that just needs good two drops in the maybe post Keliseth era, for instance, or more of a minion-based mage that still likes this card because there's still so many cheap spells out there for mage that even if you play this on two, moving into turn three and four, it still creates a lot of pressure opportunity. So I'm not saying Man Worm's totally dead, just the typical utilization is gone. It is going to hurt one of the stronger decks in the game right now with Burn Mage. So uh, an important change, I think a good positive change for sure. Not necessarily one that kills the card, but reduces its playability significantly, obviously. And changes a very powerful meta deck at its core as well. What that means is you likely won't be seeing Mana Worm for a long time. It'll pop back in someday down the road, but for now this card's gone. Burn Mage will probably hang around, but it's going to lose uh, quite a few spots on the tier list might move down to something like a tier three deck instead of a much higher consideration until replacement cards uh, find their way into the deck or somebody refines a list that makes sense uh, or even in the future when new you know good minions spell synergy cards are released all that said it's pretty nuts to see a classic card change these days i mean this thing's been around forever it's been powerful forever i'm surprised it took quite this long but i guess you know uh, when the community asks and uh, demands changes from Blizzard, uh, we finally get things like this, which I think is ultimately a, a positive change. It's something that's certainly for the good. Now, that said, let's go ahead and move on to the third card here, which anybody who plays Wild Format is going to be ecstatic about. As you guys well know, if you're around here a lot, I don't play a ton of Wild. We play a little bit here and there, but my community certainly does, and they've shared their hatred for the dreaded Aviana Coon Star Aligner shenanigans that exist in Wild Format that just completely runs people over. You ramp up to Aviana, you play something like Juicy Psych Villain to draw your full combo, and then you essentially kill your opponent outright on sometimes turn five, turn six, very easily. Uh, one of the fastest and most consistent combo decks that's ever existed in Hearthstone, and Aviana obviously is at the core of it, and that's exactly why this card is being changed. And once again here we have one mana change, which might not sound like that much in a late game combo deck environment, but again, it's a big deal because that instantly breaks the core mechanic here for the Aviana Kuhn combo and that you can no longer play Aviana Kuhn in the same turn without some outside assistance with a card like Innervate or a card like the coin that now generates you that additional mana to play your one cost Kuhn. 
And although that doesn't mean the combo is totally dead because you can slot in and innervate in that deck, uh, it does mean it's going to be way harder to pull it off uh, for a couple reasons. First off, Juicy Psychomelon will now no longer draw both Aviana and Coon. They're 10 mana. They occupy the same slot on the Juicy Psychomelon card draw requirements. So you're only going to get one. So one combo piece might get buried into the bottom of your deck instead of always being there reliantly. Uh, that means sometimes you're going to whiff on the combo early and you're going to have to have more survivability and you're going to give your opponent more time to find windows to kill you. So big hit the consistency right there. Beyond that, you have to run an extra card now in your combo, which means, again, it's harder to find all the different pieces and you're missing out on one other utility or resource or defense tool that would otherwise be there, thus hurting the survivability of the deck now that it's harder to find the combo. In both cases, that's exactly what combos don't want to have to do. They don't want to spend more time finding their stuff and they don't want to have a harder time staying alive with an additional combo piece. And this was already a pretty heavy combo deck as far as how many pieces of the combo it required and they all had to be played at a single time, unlike something like Shutterwalk, for instance, where you can kind of you know parse them out over the course of the game. All that means to me that Aviana Kuhn combo is still going to hang around, but as a much lower tier deck that's not going to win nearly as many games, it'll be far less frustrating to play against and will probably eventually kind of work its way out of the meta as more and more powerful things in wild format start to show up. So you're going to see this still? Yeah, it's still going to be around because if you keep either Aviana or Kuhn in your mulligan at any given time, Juicy Psych Melon works again and you're right back where you started. But it's not going to be the meta defining thing that it is today. I think it's going to fall off. And that's really all that people are asking for. People don't really want cards to just be totally killed and taken out of the game. I think people are happy just as long as things are tweaked down to a reasonable level. And I think Blizzard nailed it here with Aviana as far as I'm concerned. This is a good change and I'm sure my community is going to be excited. Now, I'm not a wild expert, so maybe there's some sort of interaction or, you know, maybe I'm missing the... the difficulty or consistency levels forgive me if that's the case our wild players can chime in in the comments with how much they like this change but to my eye it looks like an awfully good one and that said those are the three changes i think honestly this is more than enough of what we needed in hearthstone some people probably wanted like five or ten but just one or two small tweaks to any given meta can have big rippling impacts because suddenly if burn mage comes out of the meta maybe some slow deck that burn mage was keeping in check uh might grow in you know stature and uh there can also be some unintended consequences of changes like this for instance uh aggro mage was a deck that's really really good against quest rogue and now you're hurting aggro mages early starts so if those aggro slash burn mages aren't around to stop that quest rogue from time to time, is quest rogue actually going to maybe get a little better? Are they that reliant on giggling inventor or can they still do other exciting things with those card slots? I don't know, but keep things like that in mind because even though there is a nerf to quest rogue here, sometimes just the way things balance out can still push a, direct, a deck in an unexpected direction. So can burn mage remain that you know force that keeps quest rogue in check i'm curious and then with aviana falling out of wild format well, how's that going to affect other decks moving into its slot it's not as simple as saying this deck's going to move down every lever you pull three other levers start moving in the other direction and there's this you know cascading sort of wave where the meta settles itself based on all these changes so i think we are going to see uh, different decks rise to prominence and it's going to be the same sort of archetypes we have today i don't think anything new is going to show up in light of these changes but uh, you know where they stand how their matchups sit where they're at in popularity in the meta is all going to look awfully different when these changes hit and in fact these changes are hitting really soon too so we're going to see this uh, in in no time and of course there's a link in the description below for all the details on this stuff on the official blizzard website that said, I'm curious what you guys have to say. What do you think about these nerfs? Were these the right cards? Were these the right style of nerf? Is there anything else they could have changed that would have made this better? Leave all those thoughts in the comments below. But until then, thank you so very much for watching. And until next time, game on.